Jean, thank you so much for uh, for doing this, um, for taking the time from from where you are. So, uh, for those uh, who don't know you, um, Jean Kogan is a uh, artist, uh, programmer, uh, educator, teacher, speaker, uh, who works a lot in um, in machine learning recently. But I think you also have a background in, uh, in music uh, or in sound, and uh, and you've been developing a new project now. Um, where you are in Bombay Beach, uh, which you're, hopefully you'll be able to describe a little bit more. Um, that is a sort of a experiment in communal living uh, and developing a project that is all about sort of decentralized art. Um, so maybe you could uh, uh, elaborate a little bit on this very rudimentary introduction. I'm, uh, I'm an artist. I'm mostly interested in, in kind of new emerging techniques in computer science, mostly in AI and machine learning. Um, also have some interest in decentralization technology, cryptography, um, mostly as it applies to AI. Um, and uh, I've got kind of two mm, plates right now. That, uh, well, two, two things that I'm really focused on right now. One is um, this project called Abraham, which is to develop uh, what I call an autonomous artificial artist. And that's something I can talk about in more detail. And it's kind of a project that touches upon AI and decentralization, which is this um, something of an intentional community located in Southern California that I've uh, helped to organize with a bunch of my friends and some people who kind of found us. And we've been here um, living a, well, I've been here for the last four months now. And uh, most, of, most of the people who are participating have also been here for for at least two to, to three to four months. We've been um, kind of working on off-grid living projects, trying to um, trying to sort of do build most of our most of the infrastructure that we live on um, and making a lot of art projects and in the in the harsh desert. And that's kind of been yeah, most of the last few months, it's been it's been a really, really, it's been very experimental because it's the first time we've tried it. Um, we have lots of plans for it to try to develop it further. It was a really big success. And um, paradoxically, even even now, it's it's it feels like even more relevant and significant in this crazy time that we've we've sort of entered. Um, and so, yeah, those are kind of the two two major things. Yeah, it seems quite timely that you are uh, living off grid right now in the middle of nowhere. Um, what was the motivation for you to start this project? What, what was the inspiration? I guess my motivation for it was um, over the last few years, I've been doing a lot of educational stuff, working a lot in uh, giving workshops on, on art and technology topics, um, particularly those related to, to my own research and machine learning and decentralization and so on. And uh, the workshops have been amazing. It's kind of, the, the kind of life changing for me. It's a, something of a, basically a full time job almost for, for most of the last four or five years. Um, but there's there's things that I've always um, felt that they that the workshops didn't quite capture. The workshops feel very temporary and kind of um, often a bit transactional. And so for me, it's always been like, how can I make something which which is a workshop that you kind of stay at for for a while and and your motivation isn't isn't just for skill building but it's also for for achieving something accomplishing some some long-term goal some long-term projects over a period of months and and really kind of bonding with the community of people who are also there under under a similar pretext and so you you call the project uh, in in bombay beach brahman um but you also have a project that is called abraham uh, which are two, let's say, religious uh, traditional names. <laughs> um, could you speak a little bit about what's, what Abraham is and why you picked those those names? So, well, I guess I'll maybe talk a little bit about Abraham. Abraham is, is a project that I've initiated, I guess, maybe two, uh, maybe two years ago now, and I've been working on it very, very slowly. Um, it's a project whose ambition is to build what I call an autonomous artificial artist. I've written a couple articles that, that kind of elaborate on what I mean by that. Um, the, the succinct way of, of putting it is that I'm interested in making an agent, 
So an agent in the sense of you no know, computational agent, which makes art. Um, and that art is unique and original in the same way that you would call art by a human being, you know, unique and original. And uh, in the articles I've written about it, I have, I, I have a, like I kind of try to elaborate on, on the characteristics that, that I think are necessary for it to be truly, um, you know, in this sense, autonomous, unique and original. And um, the project, it, the, the, the short story is that the autonomy uh, and the, the originality are sort of achieved through decentralization. So making it a, a, a big community driven open source project, but, but that's radically decentralized in, in a number of ways, not just in the composition of the actual software, but also in the you know, contribution of, of all of the materials. It's a machine learning project, so it needs a lot of data. So the data is gathered in a decentralized manner. And um, in the crypto space, there's a lot of talk about what the relationship between decentralization and autonomy are. Um, the, the sort of the idea is that um, a software program can, can achieve autonomy through decentralization um, because it decouples it from any sort of one point of, of either failure or, um, you know, so somewhere that you can basically, well, one single point of failure, we can leave it at that. I'm making reference to a, a specific interpretation of religious, uh, uh, like icono I icon iconography? Iconography. Uh, religious iconography um, that was sort of um, promulgated by the, uh, the sort of Jungian school of, of um, psychoanalytics. So the um, Jung had this idea that he was he was all about the collective, um, the collective unconscious, and he um, his take was that that symbols, particularly religious symbols, and particularly really old symbols, were sort of manifestations of archetypes, um, psychological archetypes that that were deeply embedded in the collective unconscious that we sort of all um, acquire. And my um, the connection that I'm trying to make between between this Abraham project and the collective unconscious is that I, I kind of think of this um, this method that we're trying to train a generative model together with with everybody's data as a as a sort of way of bringing out the collective imagination, right? So if you can imagine taking everybody's you know or as many people as possible their their um, you know their well their data basically like the images they create the videos and sounds and the ways they use to describe them and if you try to model that with the generative model i think you're approaching something like the collective unconscious the things that that sort of um smooth out all the eccentricities of individual people and arrive at some kind of uh lowest common denominator of all of us the the, the sort of like the really principal things of what it means psychologically anyway to be a human so, so like take as a simple example, like maybe if we collected everyone's pictures of dogs, everyone takes pictures of dogs and says, this is a dog, you know, and this is your, your gen generic sort of setup for making training data sets for, for machine learning. You take what everyone conceives of as a dog, and then you train a generative model on top of it, and you get this synthetic dog. And it's kind of the average of what a word freedom or what they associate with the word, um, you know, love. You know, what would, what, what do people mean by those words? Um, you collect all those pictures together and you model them, and you, and what you should get is is something of an average. You know, generative models basically, um, well, machine learning models in general kind of try to find patterns and and remove noise. Um, you know, and noise being the the things that kind of differentiate individuals from each other um whereas the pattern is kind of what's 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 intrinsic to all of us that the thing that you will find every uh, within everybody um the the sort of like the baseline of what it what it means to 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 be human mm -hmm. and so uh, that's that's kind of my goal is to manifest this collective imagination you know given that a lot of people are maybe struggling with uh thinking about being an artist today given that you know, financially, the world is going through a serious contraction. Uh, there's probably going to be less money involved in buying arts, commissioning arts. 
And you know, I think uh, there's maybe a lot of questioning around that. So, uh, what advice would you would you be willing to share with with artists who are um, starting off or who are at the beginning of their careers? So I'm in a relatively safe position as an artist, uh, uh, especially for an artist because I have savings and I have a very like a, a relatively um, lower standard of living, let's say, than than I, I may otherwise uh, afford. So I've been I'm pretty frugal. I like to I like to kind of use broken used things rather than buy fancy new things. So this is not art. This is not advice for artists per se. It's just advice for for anybody. Uh, autonomy comes a lot from not having to depend on things. Artists are kind of you know they they. They work a lot in the emotional sphere. You know, they're they're kind of there to try to to try to induce some kind of an emotional state in in the viewer, and so maybe it means that we we have to sort of try to figure out well, what are what what are the emotional states that we need now. Um, I think people are feeling people are definitely feeling really isolated right now. People are feel I think are getting feeling really cooped up in their houses, and so what are the things that maybe artists can do to try to reduce that or to try to to try to turn that into into something with a silver lining of some kind, um, you know, I I have some ideas, but um, you know, I so for example, I'm I'm interested in telepre. I've become super interested in telepresence, and that's going to be something that I think about for the next little while. But uh -huh. um, but you know, maybe in your if you're if you're a designer, if you're in some other some other area of art, I think maybe you might have a different answer to that.